Thanks for everything you did to pull the ceremony together. Appreciate that, Marcia. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome, everybody, for coming. I know some of you came from short distances and some from further away, all at uh, great personal expense and sacrifice of your family time. I appreciate that. A special thanks to my uh, friend David from Canada, representing the great NATO country of Canada. Thank you. <laughs> the uh, last time I had a promotion ceremony was when I was a captain, way a long time ago. And I decided that if fate or luck would intervene and somehow I got promoted to general, I would go ahead and have another promotion ceremony. And that's why we're all here today. Uh, believe it or not, uh, May 10th, 1986 was when I pinned on second lieutenant right out of college. And I had the two favorite women in my life uh, pin on my rank today because uh, they had such, uh, I guess it's such a uh, honor and it's such a uh, commitment to get me promoted, probably more so than they'll ever know. My mom pinned on my second lieutenant rank way back in May 10th, 1986. Uh, I had a lot more hair back then. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of old photos and a photo album uh, back there of Mom pinning on the rank. And uh, it's, uh, they were in color, believe it or not. I didn't think we had color back then. <laughs> um, I won't keep you long, but I did want to spend a few minutes because many of you aren't familiar with my military life. So I, I, I hope, hope you would uh, indulge me in just saying a, a few comments. The promotions and awards throughout my career have always been great. Um, I've always welcomed them. It's not something I really obsessed over. But they were an indication that you know things were going fairly well uh, for my career. But for this one, I, I really wanted to get promoted to general, obviously. Uh, more so than I would probably ever admit, uh, even myself. But it, it really wasn't all uh, about me. Uh, I wanted to get promoted for, for different reasons. Really three major primary and interrelated reasons. Uh, the first one was for my supervisors over the years. They're the ones that write the evaluations, the reports that General Hare was mentioned, the tedious and cumbersome award packages throughout the years, and they're the ones who really lobbied on my behalf over the last 26 years. Um, everyone from Steve Cantrell, who took me to Korea as his executive officer, where I worked there for most summers for over five years, um, to Rex Snyder, who took me uh, to Langley Air Force Base, the 480th, the intelligence wing that General Hare was mentioning, and all the great people at the 480th, uh, Dan McCusker and, and Steve Lufata, and uh, even General uh, Larry Grunhauser, who made me his general officer rank equivalent at Air Combat Command when he moved there. Just really brilliant people. You should be proud of your military. Uh, Marty McNabb at Shaw Air Force Base, the garden spot of the East Coast in Columbia, South Carolina. Really, truly one of the, the smart men in the Air Force today. Uh, and I can't forget Joel Lancaster, Joe Bell, and uh, Larry Engel, who all watched over me when I was doing long tours in the Caribbean and, for the most part, kept me out of trouble over those years. Um, and even going back to Michael Towns, my first Air Force pilot boss, way out of travel. All of them tended to look out for me more than probably I deserved at the time, and they allowed me to make many, many mistakes along the way. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my civilian bosses over the years, uh, including Renee, who's here today, and Tom uh, O'Loughlin at Southcom. They allowed me to be away for extended periods of time, which levied more of a burden on them at their workplace. Uh, they were truly understanding of my reserve commitment. I appreciated that. And then ever since I joined uh, the Bureau and had great bosses there, uh, Don Oswald and uh, Scott Gilbert, who's here, and then Kelly Darden. Although none of them totally understood my absences, they've uh, tolerated them over the years and, and recently have even encouraged them. So again, other people have to pick up the slack in the civilian world when we're off doing our military commitments. So I appreciate that freedom and that flexibility. Uh, second reason is really for all the other reservists that are out there. Like General Hare, I've been a part-time re reservist for most of my career. There are other reservists who are fortunate enough to do this more on a full-time basis. However, for those of us who do it part-time, who have full-time family commitments and full-time civilian jobs, I hope this shows that there's a window of opportunity for them, that there's no ceiling, that even as a part-time reservist, you can get promoted to general officer uh, in the midst of juggling all the responsibilities that they have to juggle. And finally, for my uh, family, my mom and brothers and sisters who came down for the ceremony, I'm sure they wondered way back in 
1984, I guess, what the heck I was doing joining the Air Force in the ROTC, way out of National College. Uh, it had to do about uh, chasing a girl, but that's the story. <laughs> many events throughout the years and sent some postcards from very strange places. They're always near and dear to my heart uh, in spite of all the absences that I had. And then for my wife Ann and uh, children Megan and Ryan, uh, you know, reserve commitment is difficult enough, but it got increasingly difficult when I had a young family. Uh, Ann, met, Ann and I met when I was probably a late captain or early major. And I'm sure she had no idea how much I would be gone especially during the entire, almost the entire pregnancy uh, of Ryan uh, when I was deployed to the Gulf. So even though I was in the midst uh, of the, uh, I guess the, the, the heat of the Iraq battle stationed way back in Qatar, uh, she had a much more difficult time going through the first pregnancy alone. So I appreciated that. Uh, and Megan and Ryan have been troopers throughout the way. Have you? Yes. <laughs> now, compared to other other active duty folks who routinely work, honestly, 12 to 14 to 16 hour days. They deploy to sparse locations six months out of the years, and they move their families place to place every two to three years. Compared to them, I've had it extremely easy over the years. You know, even as we sit here in, in relative comfort, there are soldiers, sailors, airmen and marines deployed throughout the world, in the air, on ships, in some land that, that I literally forgot uh, watching out for us. So in most of these kids, and most of them are kids, are what makes America great today. So keep them in your thoughts today, too. I know my good friend Elio brought them people up, uh, those people that are deployed out and watching on ships and, and uh, Marine posts 24 hours a day. At his retirement ceremony, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that as well. So I can't tell you how honored I am for y'all to be here to share this special occasion. It's a day I'll never forget. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this afternoon's ceremony. Please offer your congratulations to Chris and Ann in a receiving line uh, by the food and drinks and join us <laughs> <laughs>